I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. After we got done with the last episode, I was a little bit down in the dumps because of the heat and the, the calling wasn't that great. And I about half begged them to come back out in a couple weeks. And they did, but. The only bad thing to that was I forgot rifle deer season would be going on and it ended up being just as warm as it was before. So the first morning, Dustin Patterson come with us and then my brother's got a few good spots that I usually just take him on. So we picked my brother up and gonna let him run the 10 gauge. So with rifle season going on, we were really limited to where we can go. We didn't wanna wreck anybody's deer hunting so we ended up having to run over a lot of stuff that we did two weeks ago, which I don't ever do that. I usually only like to hit something maybe three times a winter, early, mid, and then all vocals late. It's like we had a couple strikes against us already, but we got after it like we do. First stand of the morning, where's my brother Jason and Dustin Patterson. I'm gonna start this first morning stand out with Bondi fired up. See if anybody answers. So stand three was a spot where we had a bow hunter, a friend of mine from Colorado was out and he shot this deer and thought he made a questionable shot. And I said, we gotta leave it till tomorrow morning. We'll bump it or whatever. That's just what we do, you know, you don't. You... So he's all worried about losing his meat. And I said, ah, the coy if they find it, they'll just chew on the back of it a little. They, they, it'll be all right. So we go find his deer the next morning right off the bat and that thing was cleaned up. I mean, there wasn't nothing left of it but a skeleton. I knew there was a lot of coyotes in this area and we actually tried the same spot two weeks ago. So we all slip in there and scatter out and then bales. Second stand of the morning. This is redemption day from the last time we were here. Hopefully we get one or two to come in. Today I'm a little out of my element not carrying my shotgun. Rick's little brother has a shotgun today. I'm sitting here with this rifle thingy with the glass thing on top of it. So I started off with a couple different rabbits. Man, I just happened to look over to the left. Nobody move. So I turned SIG-3 on, and shortly after that, another coyote showed up way across to the right, and he, he was 
studying us and I thought, okay, I'll turn a coaxer on, get him over here. Is he thinking about it? I can't see him now. And I think I turned baby cottontail on and that thing like swapped in. So right then was an indicator to us that with the weather and all the people in orange marching through the creeks, whatever, they weren't, they weren't having nothing to do with the rabbit or the bird. So after we got that coyote drug out of that stand, we took off and we're about two miles from where we had got a double two weeks ago. And there was four coyotes came in on that stand. We hiked back in there just like we did before, set up in this old tree that me and my dad had drug up there for better filming. I played a woodpecker, I played a bunch of stuff, and then as soon as I went to pup, He's down in them trees. There's another one, yeah. Up, in the, up against the, the fence line. Yeah, I can see that. See that mangy one down there? I would say that was the two that got away last time. I don't feel like they would have came any closer to the pup fight I was playing, so I tried a baby cottontail and then they like, almost acted like, oh, that's what they did last time. I'm still playing around here trying to get that last one to come back for one little peek. Probably not gonna happen though. What do you think, Dustin? You shot the right coyote this time. I think so. Proud of you. Let's get out of here and go find another high noon one. I like it. Not the greatest of footage again, but better than walking out of here with your dauber down. So we're only four stands in and we've got a couple of kills already. Not the greatest, not them hard chargers we're looking for, but we're pumped up and fired up and ready to go. And then bing, bang, boom, seven stands later, we ain't seen squat. So it's getting late in the afternoon. I got a spot where I know there hasn't been anybody deer hunting and we always shoot a coyote or a bobcat, but the way the sun was in the wind, we had to come in at it at a different angle. So we get set up Man, I was playing Lucky Pecker and I had it cranked up pretty good. I was about to give up on the stand and then Patterson says, Sneak him down. Wait till it moves to me. He, is he 
just sitting there just looking. Is he nervous? There he comes. Go ahead and move on. Is he coming? Tell me when he ain't looking. So for me, when I have an opportunity at a cat and it's not smooth, you can see it plain as day. What I'm saying is if it's bald grass and, it, and you can see it, then try to work it closer. But if there's any kind of cover whatsoever, I mean, they'll screw you over every time. And What's he, where's he at for a minute? Oh yeah, I see it. I just don't want to lose him. Is that the metal seer now? He's coming, it seems like. I've seen him get behind an evergreen like that and you never see him again. Anybody see him? Oh, I see him. You see him? Ricky, I'm dang, I'm scared why he's gonna get below this hill here. He's down into the clump in the bottom of the draw over here to the right. They probably got a better view. See him right there? I feel like I should shoot him. God dang it. That was where I wanted to do it right there. That was a mistake, I think. We decided to try to coax him on in there and I was in my mind, I knew that was a mistake. And sure enough, when he worked his way down that hill into that bottom where that grass was taller, we never saw him again. Day two was kind of a repeat of day one. It was hot and we were on Russ's with Mike. Mid-morning, we're going into maybe one of my most favorite spots. I ain't gonna say 100%er like a lot of the, you know, but nine times out of 10, we call something in there. All right, this is the third stand of the morning. I bought a tasty pastry donut this morning that I said I'm not gonna eat till we get one to the call so and I'm getting hungry I want that donut I want it bad right Mike I'd been playing TNT for several minutes I was getting kind of like uh oh, nothing again now here we are and this blue heron lands in an evergreen way down there and I was like that's kind of odd and I just looked over to the left and a cat was Hey, I'm gonna shoot it, Mike. Yeah, you got a fur harvester? Yeah, I'm gonna shoot it. See that bobcat shot right in front of the car? Nice shot, Rick. You got it on the second, second one, one was. <laughs> I pulled a mic. <laughs> <laughs> sure made him jump. You get to eat your hey, hey, look. Oh man, I don't even know what to say. He gets to eat his donut. You know what? Real I want to give a real quick tech tech tip. When you're shooting an AR, your scope's about five inches. Can you see where I'm talking about? I got the shakes bad. So <laughs> So here's your barrel, your scope's up here. So at 20 yards, you're gonna be about that low. I know I'm shaking, but I'm telling you, remember that when you let something get into, man, I'm rattled. Mike, awesome. Mike didn't have a fur harvester, so, so I'm gonna shoot it, right? But what, what you don't remember is at 20 yards, your AR is about five inches low. Four, well look, you can see where the scope is. It takes it 50 yards to, you know, get light back where it's supposed to. So, oh. 
man, you just don't realize when the calling's tough, how much it means when you have a magical hunt like that. That was pretty, oh man, I seen, did you see him right after I said Sean? Man, I'm just spent. <laughs> that second shot was amazing. I can't, after it took off like that, I was like, holy cow. Yep, too low. I'll have to remember that excuse for next time I miss. <laughs> well, 20 yards. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Can't you just let me have my donut? <laughs> I'm letting you have your donut. Good shot, bud. Yeah. That second shot was amazing. I don't know how you hit it. I just, with that, with that red dot on top, it's right there. That's what you used? Yeah. I got gotcha. you. I'll tell you what, if I wouldn't have got it killed, I would have literally kicked the windshield out of my tundra. I would have. <laughs> would you eat the donut? No, I'd have stomped that <laughs> thing into the earth. <laughs> Could you imagine how teed off you would have been? Yeah. At 20 yards? So we grind out the rest of the day and got this crazy coon and this big cottonwood and I'm saving the last stand. I know exactly where, where I wanna go because we've been bow hunting in there and the coyotes are lighting up in this half section just all over it. So finally it gets 4.30 and we slip in there. I'd like to think of it as I am legend when those dogs are like held back by the sun. We like to call the last spot we hunt at the end of the day, the last straw when it's like this. It's not the last stand, it's the last straw. I'm just kidding, we're gonna get one. I'm gonna start out with Blondie fired up. And then I'll probably go to TNT. We'll see how it goes. We got about 10, 15 minutes and it'll be done. There was three over here and one down in front of us that sounded real close and a couple off over to the left. I'd say there was six or seven coyotes in that from one side of that creek to the other. So I go into prey distress and Patterson says there's one over here in a cedar and it just lays down. Typical of what the whole trip was. Just, they just weren't hungry. They just didn't care about any rabbit, you know. And then I tried another rabbit, and then I tried another rabbit. And finally, I started playing some fights and just, I couldn't bring one of them coyotes out of there. So I, I tried several different howls and one down in front of us got mad and started, wasn't burger barking, you could just tell he was, he was fired up down there. and he didn't want to come out, really. We couldn't see him down there. Then finally I did a crippy solo serenade, I think, and that teed that coyote off enough that he came out. He's right on the edge down by the big tree.
I'll just keep thumbing through pup distresses or coyote fights. Yeah, I am. Digging and scratching down there. Or is it? Why don't we kill it? Kill him, Patterson. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Oh, well, he's giving us a look now. And that second one decided to come have a look. And he, he didn't come towards us much, but he was sweeping out in the open trying to get our wind. I hit a fight instantly, and that second one come out there to try to look for his buddy or to check out what was going on. Is he running over here? Where's he at? Oh yeah. Did you get it? I didn't want to shoot. I didn't see it. I was a freaking nervous wreck over here like usual. I don't even know how we pulled all that off. I just want to say some days they just won't come in. But we, this is the last stand and there's coyotes howling all over here. It, sometimes it'll make, it, make an experienced guy like me feel like I, it's the first time I've ever went calling. To make this short, Patterson and I got a double, and I was so nervous about this second one that I didn't want to shoot. Good job, Patterson. I should have had a double there, but this low light, I kept losing it in the scope. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, is that a wrap? <laughs> Did, were you full power on your scope? Well, no, because it'd go too grainy See, down there, so I, I had to. Up with. So I had to back it off a little bit and I was like, come on, Patterson, shoot, shoot. I was just didn't have no confidence that I could kill him. And this is, you know, I don't know what the yardage was yeah. down there. I thought you guys said about 300 or 270. 275 on that one and 235 on this one. And this 223, you know, I haven't really shot long. I don't know. Yeah. So I just put it about four inches above him and nice. let her eat. Cause I, I thought he was gonna go any second. And, 
You just didn't feel I was on it and I got the shakes and I stopped myself. When it's such a struggle, it means a huge amount, you know, especially to capitalize like we did. I mean, we could have did a pouting march back to the truck, you know, on the last stand. And this was, this is how me and Patterson dream of something. Yeah. Jeff would even be proud of our shooting there. Yeah. No, that was perfect. So some days when the coyotes are flying in left and right and you got the pickup bed full of them, you know, it's no big deal. But when you struggle and you work so hard at it and then it all comes together in the end like you dreamed, you just get frazzled, you know, you just, I was rattled on that deal and I didn't want to be, I didn't want to shoot the coyote that I shot just because I, I was shaking around and we, I was nervous and I didn't really know the yardage and, but we made it happen. It was awesome to end the trip with a double with my buddy Dustin Patterson.